May 14, 2010, Tom Stevens calls 911 after finding a woman bleeding in his backyard. 911, we're reporting. Uh, I'd like to report a uh, gunshot wound. Someone got shot where? Uh, she's below her chest on... Okay, but where's she at? Oh, 9922 58th Street, Northwest. And how did this person get shot? On purpose or by accident? On purpose or by accident. Purpose. Okay, hold on the line for the fire department. And where's the shooter at? I'm sorry. Where's the shooter at? Uh, First County Fire Department. Lisa transferring the caller saying that there's a female that shot? The female the female shot, uh, her husband is shot as well. Where at? Where is your husband? She didn't know, she came out the, up the back way. I can give you the address where the shot took place. I need to know where the patients are. Uh, we need to know where your husband is. The one patient is at 9922 58th Street Northwest. Okay, is that a house apartment or mobile home? A uh, house. Okay, your name? Tom Stevens. Tom, what's the phone number you're calling from? 253. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, how old is she? Uh, Ma'am, age? 67. Okay, and is she, she is. is she the way she's talking to you? Is she breathing? Yes. Okay. She is um, half sitting up, supported by one arm. Okay, and where was she shot? On her left side, uh, probably a little bit upper stomach. Of, like the higher what, part of what the What was she shot with? What were you shot with? Some kind of a handgun. Okay, and how old is she? Uh, she's six, 68. Okay. And her husband is somewhere else? You don't know where? Uh, her, I, I'm not sure where her husband is. Okay. Just, is there, is, she having, is yeah. she having serious bleeding? No, she's not having serious bleeding, but she is bleeding. Okay, is she completely alert? She's pretty alert. Okay. Did and when did this happen? When did this happen? Sometime in the last half hour. Okay, in the last 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to give you some instructions here in a minute, but right now I'm going to let the police take over. Go ahead. All right, thanks, sir. I'm away from the window. Sir? Yes. So do you know where she was when this occurred? Uh, can you say the address again? 1016? 1008. Okay, wait, hold on again. 1016? 1008. 1008. Okay. North 56. One, okay. 10,008. 1008. And what's the street number? Uh, 58. It's 10,008. 58. She should keep saying it's Deputy Myron's house. So, 10858? Deputy Myron. Deputy Myron's house? Yes. Is she Deputy Myron's wife? Uh, uh, what's your relation to Deputy Myron? Mother-in-law. Name. Move back towards me, please. Okay, does she know who shot him? Deputy Myron. This is Deputy Myron's mother-in-law? Yes. And Deputy Myron shot her? And Deputy Myron shot you? Yes. And it's Myron or Myron? Myron or Myron? M-Y-R-O-N? M-Y-R-O-N. Okay, do we know where Deputy Myron is? I do not. Okay, does she? No, she says that we need to come into the house. I'm um, so, sorry? No, she did not know. She said that uh, she told her not to leave. And she got away? Yes. Can I help did she leave in a car on foot? She, she left on foot. I don't want them to be able to listen to her and who else is shot? Her husband? Her husband. Okay, and what about his wife? I, um, I'm not his wife. I don't know anything okay. about the situation. Oh, I understand. Can you ask her if she knows where his wife is? You, you know about Deputy Myron's wife? She's in federal way at the hospital where her daughter's a patient. Okay. But this is a dispatcher. I need to confirm the exact address that you're at. Are you at 9922 58th Street now? Yes. Okay. How did you get there from Deputy Myron's address, from 10008? You, is it across the street or? I live here. Okay. came out of my living room and saw a woman in my backyard. Okay. Do you know if anyone is still at Myron's house? 
Um, I have no idea who's there. Uh, Ellen is with me. She doesn't know where her husband is. Okay, and Ellen is Deputy Myron's wife? My daughter is there with him, too. No, the victims are the parent-in-law, dad-in-law and mother-in-law. Okay. The, and the wife is in federal way in the hospital with the daughter? Yes. Okay, where is, where is the father-in-law at? Is he still over at 1008? I have no idea. Can she, can the lady, let me talk to the lady. She's playing with uh, she thinks that he's on the dri in the driveway. He's in the driveway? Of your house? Of my house. Uh, of their house, of Deputy Myron's house. Okay, so is there any way that I can talk to her? Yeah, we can try. Here. Hello? Hi, this is the dispatcher at the Sheriff's Department. What's your name? Susan Mulcannon, M-U-L-T-A-N. Okay, Susan. Did um, Deputy Myron shoot you and your husband? Yes. Okay, where did he go? Well, he was downstairs on the driveway arguing with his daughter. Is he still at the house? What? Is he still at the house? I don't know because I crawled through the woods and got away from there. Okay, so the last time you saw him, he was inside the house? Well, I was upstairs in an upstairs apartment that's over the garage. Okay. And I crawled out the back way through the woods. I came over here. This is two houses down. Okay, and who else was in the house with him? Well, I was the only, I was up in the apartment above the garage, and he and my husband were down in the driveway. Okay, what name does he go by? Does he go by Alan? Alan, yeah. Okay. What kind of gun did he shoot you with? Some kind of a handgun. Okay, so I know that you live in the apartment above the um, house. Do you know if there's anyone else beside your husband and Myron there? Our granddaughter was there with me, Christine, named Sarah. I mean, sorry, uh, Kristen. What's her name? Kristen. Kristen? Is that Alan's daughter? Yes. And she was in the house when you left? He was up in the apartment with me, and then he took her outside. So they were down in the driveway. Okay, so um, Alan and Kristen were in the driveway when you, you the last time you saw them. Yes. Do you think that they were leaving? I don't. I really don't. Know. What kind of car does he drive? Oh, I don't know. He has a police car and he has a some kind of an older sedan. What color is the older sedan? Kind of a grayish. Oh, and it's a four door. I think so. Is his patrol car parked in the driveway? It was parked alongside the house. Do you know how many other guns he has in the house? Uh, no, I don't. What was Alan wearing today? Uh, he's just dressed casually. Like what color shirt? Oh, I don't know for sure. Maybe plaid and maybe jeans. A plaid shirt? Maybe. I don't know. Sorry. Now, can you see, can you guys see the house from where you're at? No, I'm hiding in the back room of this other house and two doors down. I crawled out through the woods. And okay, out. where were you shot at? Lower, um, like in the lower step area. Um... Well, you sound like you're doing pretty good. Do you know where your husband was shot at? I don't know, but Ellen told me he was dead. So I just Ellen told you that he was dead. Okay. So, Ellen and your husband got in a confrontation in the driveway. He shot your husband in the driveway. Then he came up to the apartment and shot you. Yes. And then he took his daughter and went back outside. They were out in the driveway arguing, and she was crying, and I'm not sure where they are now. Just stay 
on the phone with me. I'm just trying to update the officers that are coming, okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Okay, what is the phone number inside the house? That's your house? Yeah. 253. Okay, now what is the number inside your apartment? Well, that's not my apartment. There is a phone in There's the no phone up. Oh, it's like just the guest room? Yeah. Now, do you know Myron's cell phone number? I don't offhand. How about his daughter? Do you know Kristen's cell phone number? She doesn't have a cell phone. I can give you his wife's cell phone number. Okay, but the wife is is not there. The wife is in Seattle, right? She's at Federal Way. In Federal Way. Okay, we I think we have her on the phone already. You're doing a great job. Oh, you got her on the phone? Okay. Yeah, we have her on the phone, and I'm going to keep you on the phone. Okay. Thank you so much. Very nice. Appreciate it. I'm so glad you were there. Okay, now, are there any other cars that you can remember that are parked there? Well, our own little car was there, the maroon car. Okay, where were the keys to that? Probably my husband's pocket. And what kind of car is it? Oh, like a Lumina. And is it in the driveway? Well, it was. I don't know if anybody left with it. Now, Ellen took my purse, which had all of my keys in for the car, so I don't know where all that went. Okay, Ellen took your purse when he, after he shot you? Yes. So I don't know where that is. Um, Matt, they need to look for a maroon Lumina. That's her car, and he took her purse and keys after he shot her. Did he take my car? Well, I don't know. It, since he had the keys to it, I want them to be on the lookout for it when they... I know he's got a little gray car, and he's got a... him and tell him that I'm going to be late? Who are you talking to? Jim. Oh, um, I'm talking to my partner. Oh, uh, you got I, me. I'm dead. Huh? Oh, you got me. I'm Susan Mulcannon. Yes, I, I'm talking to you, Susan, and then I'm also talking to the other dispatchers in the room. Oh. Now, how, how bad is your wound? Are you in a lot of pain? You? Well, it's starting to kind of sting there. I mean, the whole body hurt at first, and then, you know, I was having a lot of trouble breathing when I was trying to walk or crawl. I kept falling. All right. I'm on the floor, and, yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of stinging there. Mostly my back hurts, so I don't know if the wound, I don't know. I don't know if it's affected my lungs or what. But I am able 
Okay, it sounds like we're going to have someone over there with you in just a minute, and as soon as they can secure that house, we're going to get medical aid in there for you, okay? Thank you. What was going on today that set Alan off like this? Well, they've had a very sticky situation. They've had, he's been a kind of an abusive husband for a while, but just, they've had a daughter with an eating disorder with depression, and she tried to kill herself and was put into the hospital on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, the children are somewhat estranged from their father, and she didn't want her father to see her. And then she was moved to another hospital over last night. And his mother and her boyfriend, I didn't look at her love to her hair. And he was angry and it was like revolving against him. And so he was angry at his wife, too, of course. Okay. And she's crying. She's not to go back to her. All right. So was, was um, planning either before he Is he a drinker? Had he been drinking or anything today? I don't know. As far as I know, he has his been, but I don't know. You're not sure? Okay. <laughs> I got the page, man. Are you still with me? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going there now. It looks like, it looks like you're going to have a couple of officers going there in a minute, okay? Yeah, and they were a little more on the left side, so I don't know if that's wrong. I'm paging this. Not offhand. Not offhand, okay. Okay. Oh, I think I have it here. whose home you're at, because we're having a hard time finding your house. It's two doors down from here. Hello? Hi, we're having a hard time finding your house. Um, what, what does your house People, look like? There's cops here. There's cops there? Yes. Okay, can I talk to one of them? Gentlemen in the... Yes, we, we're good. Yes. Okay, you have the police there? Yes. I have the police here. Yes. She's, uh, 
Yeah. I'm on the phone with dispatch 911. She, I can take you right to her. It's 9922 Street. Just me and her. Everybody, this is she was in the vehicle. Yeah, she is. Yeah, everything. Uh, I have no idea about anybody's location except for her. We came inside and turned off the lights and locked doors because she thought he might be around. You guys are totally fine. No, sir. Or no, ma'am. Um, yes. I've been, I was here the whole time. Can I tell you what I just told him? Can I tell you what I just told him? I'm oh, sorry. Hello? Okay, I just, I need to know if they're ready for the fire department to come in. The fire department, I mean, yes, they're coming in. The fire department is coming in right now? Okay, I'm going to let you go. Bye-bye. Fire's on the line, thanks. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. The Alan Myron. Uh, a man who um, wore a badge and protected people, but then stepped over the line and went from a protector to being a criminal. And I believe this should be called exactly what it is. Um, so you will not hear me using the word tragedy. You will hear me using the word murder. These were murders. Gig Harbor, Washington. 49-year-old Deputy Alan Myron got into an argument with his father-in-law. He blamed his in-laws for interfering in his marriage. He also blamed them for trying to turn his wife against him. Susan, 68, and 70-year-old Monty Motanen helped their son-in-law's family financially during the time he was on leave for almost two years. Alan had a severe back injury and he recently only returned back to work a few months before the shooting. An hour before the shooting on Friday, Alan's wife Sarah Myron called his supervisor about his recent behavior at the hospital. She told him that Alan seemed angry. His supervisor didn't think nothing was serious was going on. He set up an appointment for the following week to speak to Alan. He put her in contact with the domestic violence detective. She told him that Alan wasn't abusive, never made threats to harm her, or find him to be dangerous. The detective made an appointment for an upcoming Monday. She never told him about Alan's suicide attempt in December the previous year. In the last 11 years, Alan's supervisor only had one file complaint about him. He was rude during a police investigation. Two gunshots woke up Alan's youngest daughter from a nap she was taking in her grandmother's apartment. She went to see what was going on and saw her grandmother get shot by her father. She also heard him yell at her grandmother about her attempts to ruin his marriage. He told his daughter to leave with him and go to the main house. As they left the apartment, she saw her grandfather dead in the driveway. Alan then told his daughter that it's all of her mother's fault for not returning his phone calls or answering his text messages, refusing to talk to him at the hospital. He also told her that it was her grandparents' fault for getting involved in his marriage. Once they got into the main house, he made her go upstairs to the master bedroom. He tried to call his wife again, but she didn't answer. He turned around and looked at his daughter and told her he was going to commit suicide. He told her to go to the basement and lock the door. She did as she was told. During this time is when Susan was able to leave her apartment and crawl through the woods to Tom Stevens' house. A family friend that was also living in the main house with the Myrons came home from work. He didn't see anything unusual. He went down to the basement and saw Alan's daughter. She told him that her dad was going to kill himself. Both of them went upstairs to check on Alan. He was still there holding a shotgun. He told them both to leave and go back to the basement. Alan made sure to try to conceal the crime. He had hid his father-in-law's body in the garage and he also took a water hose and sprayed the driveway of the blood. When police arrived, they negotiated with him for several hours. Alan complained and said he was unhappy with the sheriff's department. He also told them about his failing marriage and his in-law's involvement, once again blaming them. And after some time had passed, they heard a gunshot. They found Alan dead in a bedroom and he had four weapons near his body, two handguns, a shotgun, and a rifle. People who knew Alan said he was always close to his in-laws and never had a problem with them. They were shocked that something like this happened. My thoughts and prayers go out to the family for their losses, said Sheriff Paul Pastor, but I have nothing but disgust and contempt for these acts of murder. He worked with us and then he crossed the line and worked against us. That is flat wrong. Susan sadly died after she was taken to Harvard Medical Center.